that's all right. So we need to do them all one time, evidently. Uh, those will have to merge. These will have to merge. And yeah, those over there. So now if we go ahead. Hmm. This side's not exactly the same, I don't know why. There we go. Gotta move these in about right there. Alright, now it should work. <laughs> These. Ah, keep selecting the wrong thing. This, 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 that, these, these. Now if I hit W, remove doubles, and increase the threshold. I should see all those just go ahead and snap together. And go out. There you go. Merge right into the side of that. And so far no triangles or pinching or any sort of funny business going on. I can go ahead and this is real nice and thin. Should I do it the other side too? S Y. Grab these. These. That's why I scale these out. I have an extra little bit of a styling right there. Click smooth shading. And you notice it's all, wow, really wacky looking. So I have to go back in here, select everything, go down here and recalculate the normals. And it goes ahead and fixes everything like that. Make sure the normal's all facing the right direction. And actually, there's some weird stuff going on here. The normal's, it doesn't know how to calculate it properly. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but yeah. <laughs> you go into your panel here. Normals from the face, not really huge. Scale them down a little bit. You notice the blue lines um, tell you which way the normals are facing, and for some reason on this half of the mesh, the normals are actually facing inside, as opposed to sticking out. And unfortunately, yeah, it's kind of hard to fix. For right now, I'm just going to leave it, and then later once we're done, I'll go ahead and have to uh, see if applying the mirror modifier will help fix the normals properly. For now, we'll just leave it. And to make it look a little nicer, we'll just go ahead and keep on flat shading as well. All right, so there's the hilt. Um, now we'll move on to doing the handle. So here, move us down until we have the approximately right length for the handle. Blade looking a little short now. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen that. It's like a great source. Now I got to lengthen the handle <laughs> some more. And okay, the only separate objects that we'll have on the handle will be the. Uh, bindings or the leather for the hilt, the handle or something but right now the pommel we'll have to extrude out from here let's see i'm gonna do something real simple okay i'm just gonna go ahead and extrude this straight down um i'm trying to think of what i want to do i don't know i'll just uh, see what happens if i extrude these outward <laughs> And, all right, grab these inward. Let's 
screw this downward. That looks pretty bad. <laughs> I'm going to do something small because I'm kind of running dry on ideas of what to, how to style this. Um, hmm. Alright, whatever, we'll just do that. Now, we're going to have to extrude these inward again. Uh, let's see. Extrude them more time and extrude them. SX0. Huh? Oh, yeah, I have the modifier on. I forgot. Just drag them into the center. Okay. Start filling these in. As you notice, the normals are the wrong way on the top faces as well. We'll go ahead and fix that later. All right. Select the, just these faces down here. Drag them down a little bit. This is a little bit too wide, unfortunately, for what I'm going to have to do with the uh, the bind, the hand, the the leather. So what I'm going to do is let's see, add a loop cut. I'll say, well, up here, close as possible to that, and then uh, don't want these. even these quads out a little bit. Grab X. Until they're probably about right in the middle. And it doesn't really matter a whole lot how this part looks, but right now it should look like too thin because we're going to add the leather around it and it'll be thicker. Still don't like how this looks, but... Uh. Oops. That's certainly very unique. But for now, we'll just uh, go ahead and leave it at that. All right, now, I think I'll go ahead and jump in and do something a little harder for the leather. Um, instead of just doing rings going around, I'll just uh, I'll try to do see if I can do a spiral. So let's see. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. So place the 3D cursor. Actually, select this vertex. This vertex. Um, hit Shift S and cursor to selection. So it places the 3D cursor right in between those. Hit Shift A and hit cylinder. Whoa. Okay, so let's put this um, down to 12. Uh, 
don't know if we want to see if we want to cap n. Nah, I don't want to cap it. Mm. I'm not going to cap the ends. And we'll just go ahead in here, put the radius down. Depth down. Until it's about like that. All right. Now notice once you start um, manipulating this. Um, uh, actually, whoa. Yeah, I forgot. We have a problem now. We have to uncheck clipping for the modifier, just drag these apart. Um, uh, I screwed it up. First unhit, undo clipping, pull them apart. Drag them down and delete half of it. Because we have the mirror modifier in here. And actually, you know, this is going to be a little bit too hard, so I'm going to do this at P to separate it by selection and go ahead and work on this as a separate object because I don't want um, it's not I'm not gonna be able to do it with a mirror modifier so go back into edit mode now we have this and what I'm gonna do is you know, press V yeah never mind go back out the object mode first apply the mirror modifier then go back in hit V and I can uh, rip this apart. Um, I don't know, there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it manually. I'm going to move this down, straight down, until it's uh, slightly below this one. Grab this, move it down, and just trying to keep it as uniform as possible. Move everything down. Until, of course, reach uh, <laughs> this, which unfortunately is pretty hard to do. So I'm going to start from both ends and kind of even out. And this is why you don't want like 32 rings on uh, your cylinder right when you start off, because you're going to end up really with a lot of vertices to manually put down. I wonder if I could do that. Sort of this half spot on that. <laughs> a little too hard. Now you can probably just measure it out and uh, type in a value for translating these on the z-axis to make it a lot more even. But I don't really know what that is, so. I'm just going to, have to do it manually. So if you calculate how tall this is, and then the, how many rings you have, and then what percentage of the distance you got to move it down, you can just type the value in. But since I'm already almost done, I'm just going to go ahead and do it manually. So now I have a spiral like this. And as you notice, they're a lot further apart than I want it to be. But I'm just see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go back, see if I can go back up the other way, close up this gap. Now I'm going to see if I can select all this, just to make sure it's actually going to work. Yep. And you see we can just keep uh, duplicating these and moving them down once we have one of those units. and have like a spiral binding to the hilt. For now, let's just work on this one. Um, since it it is uh, its own separate object, we could use modifiers on it, which I think I will. Um, like a solidify modifier? I don't know. Now we're going to have a problem because I need to put some sort of a ring to cap the end up here. Eh. I'll put the ring on top right there somewhere. So, scales on the y-axis. Eh, I'm going to leave it round until I'm done with it, actually. 